He said, when you take a seed, if you take that mustard seed and plant it in the soil, you cover it over, and what the soil does to that seed, and what the seed does to the soil, you don't know. That's why Jesus said you plant the seed as part of our offering confession. And it rises up and you know not how, but when first the ear, then the blade, then the full ear in the blade, and as soon as the harvest is ready, you put in the sickle and you reap the harvest. Don't we, we reap the harvest of our offering? We're talking about our offering confession of faith. It's all God's word. You don't know what happens but the soil puts a demand on the seed and the seed puts a demand on the soil till something springs up after you've been taking care of the seed in the ground with water and you water the word that you have planted with the words of thanksgiving to God for the harvest that you're going to have. That's how we water it. That's how we tend to it. it says it springs up. You don't know how. So when you speak God's word back to him, Quit worrying about the how. How's he going to give me a new liver, a new gallbladder, new knees? How's he going to do that? I don't have a clue. But I know that if God's word is like a seed, it has what it says in Isaiah 61.1, it has contained in it self-fulfilling power. Self-fulfilling power. The ground, keep the analogy, the ground has no right to change the demand that the seed placed on it. You'll never plant a mustard seed and get an apple tree. The ground says, I don't want any more mustard seeds, mustard plants. I want an apple tree. Will that ever happen? Not in this world. Because everything reproduces after its own kind. Yes, Pastor. I guess I'm a how person. What can you give me an example of if I wanted to plant a new liver? What would my confession be? My confession? Maybe it's like the one that I made for my new gallbladder, since they took mine out and threw it away. And I have made a demand for a new gallbladder. This is, this is kind of technical, you guys. Pay attention. <laughs> Father, I need a new gallbladder and I thank you for giving me a new gallbladder in Jesus' name. That's as deep as it can get. I mean, it's not, you know, I'm just... I want it to be for everyone. I want it to you realize in the simplicity of it, we can miss the whole thing. He said, before you ask, I've answered. He said, with Jesus' stripes, we're healed. He said he hastens to perform his word. He tells us he's, he tells us he's not a liar. He told us that his arm is not so short that he can't provide every need that we have. But do we believe it? See, the good news is the gospel is the good news. But it's said for us to beware, lest we fall into the same trap that the children of Israel did, not mixing faith with the word, his word, the gospel, the good news. Not mixing faith with the good news. It says, for the gospel has been preached unto us the same way it was preached unto him unto the children, of, the children of Israel. That gospel that was first given to Abraham. God said that he supplies all of my need according to his riches in glory. I need a new gallbladder. So I need to go where I can get a new gallbladder. 
I thank you, Father, for supplying the need that I have. I thank you for giving me the new gallbladder. How's he going to do that? Is he going to perform surgery? Is he going to open me up and put it back and attach it and do what? How did Jesus have people growing new arms and new legs? And then he said, the work that I do, you shall do also, and greater works will you do, because I go unto my Father. But can we bring ourselves to believe it? It's so simple, and every time it just keeps getting more simplistic and more simplistic, and it is so simple, it becomes completely obligated and foreign to the mind of man. And see, this is something, I'm going to share this with you, and, and it'll help. It'll help on that question too, Pastor. When you start to realize from these scriptures that we've been going over and will continue to go over, that you cannot get the how from me. Can't do it. The only thing you can get from me is information. The Holy Spirit will give you the revelation. That's why the scriptures go to so much trouble where Paul says, don't exhort that may exalt that man as being your leader, your teacher. This scripture says, give honor to whose honors do. You want to give me honor? Honor me for taking the time to study, for taking the time to pray, to taking the time to put together the lessons to bring to you. But as far as the manifestation of what I'm teaching you and how it works, I can't tell you because the carnal mind cannot receive the things of God. Our minds are not saved. I hope that didn't frighten any of you, but our minds are not saved. It says receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save your soul. Yes, Pastor. Okay, we should come. Okay, to get it started, we should find God's word on it. And then we should confess his word back to him. This is, the, I can tell you the process. What happens in the soil, I can't tell. What it is about faith that when it reaches the spiritual realm, turns it into a material object that now appears in the material realm. I can't tell you that part. But the, the, the methodology is to, number one, find his word. We want to have faith in his word. And then we have faith that his word will, number one, will not return to him void. If you look up in Isaiah 55, here again, he's talking about things like planting and sowing and reaping in the earth realm. Doesn't he talk about that in Isaiah 55 as the rain comes down and waters the earth? So his word has come down and watered us. His word is not going to return to him void without accomplishing that for which he purposed and he pleased it. So if we had his word, we would take his word as a seed and plant it, but not in the earth, we'd plant it in the heavenly realm. Jesus taught us all of this in the parable of the sower. Remember he said in Luke chapter 8 verse 11, he was explaining the parable of the sower. And he said the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So if you want apple seeds, you plant apple seeds. You want apples, you plant apple seeds here in the earth realm. If you want healing, you plant healing seed in the spiritual realm. The way we plant the seed, the way that we get our words to go into the spiritual realm is to remember what Jesus said. He said, my words are spirit and they are truth or they are reality. We don't make the words spiritual words. His words are spirit and they are truth. So we find his word on it, we confess his word, we tend to what we have sown in the spiritual realm with the giving of thanks. I thank you, Father, for my new gallbladder. Now it's in the spiritual realm the same way a seed is in the ground. I can't see anything happening. 
When your apple seed is turning into an apple plant, you don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. And if I go to the doctor and he says, you know what? Those tests we ran on you, I thought you had your gallbladder removed. I said, well, I did. He said, no, no, you got a gallbladder. This is what I don't want you to say. I want you to already, at this point in this, I want you to already be prepared. Don't let this come out of your mouth. Well, I don't believe it. I can't believe that. Oh, that's too awesome to believe. No. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else have any questions? Is this plain to anyone? Oh, well, praise God. We're going to, yes. So the how, trying to figure out the how causes unbelief? Trying to figure out the how causes unbelief, yes. It could be because Satan will get in the how. See, we don't even want it to be, we don't even want anyone to say, well, do you remember what Pastor Stewart said it works this way? No. You're missing it. The Word says this, and God's Word says it works this way. See, if you add Pastor Stewart, Satan has got you off. He got you to shave off just a little bit. Why do you think that the, the, in religion there's the kissing of the rings and all of this stuff and the bowing down and the adoration of this minister, that minister, that pastor? That is not scriptural, church. You are not a gift to me. I am a gift to you. Read the scriptures right. And he gave gifts unto men, and some of those gifts were pastors and teachers. But Satan got it all flipped around, so we don't listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 where Paul says, Exalt no man as being your leader. He said, Whether Paul or Apollos, that's Cephas, or who was the other guy? Uh, some more, he says, he, he, he says, they're all men. He said, all things, if it's a thing, guess who it belongs to? Belongs to you. So how do I get the thing? Get the title deed to it. He's not going to steal from another person. God will always, let me finish this now. God will always do this. So you have some idea how the process, a process that could transpire. I'm not saying it's going to happen this way. It could happen this way. I'm just making this up, all right? You're believing God for the title deed to a house, right? So you're sitting around waiting for this piece of paper with the title deed on it, right? And God sends you an idea about opening a donut shop. He said, you open that donut shop, you can get the title deed to the house. Um, no, I'm waiting on the title deed. You just missed it. He will always give you the thing or the way to obtain the thing you're standing in faith for. So you open a little donut shop, your donuts are great, and someone comes along and says, oh, I'd like to franchise that business for you, or take and buy that name, and I'll give you $12 million for it. And you take the $2 million and go over and get the house that you could see with the money that you can now see and you pay off the house and guess what they give you? A title deed. Don't put God in a box. Just give him thanks for the title deed. What's the assurance that you're going to get the title deed? My faith. I planted my faith. I planted my faith. I watered my faith. I water it with the giving of thanks. Thank you, Father, for the new gallbladder. Thank you, Father. And I'm bold enough to do it just like Jesus did. I'm doing it in front of you guys. As old as I am, I've already ordered him some other, ordered some other parts, not just a new gallbladder. <laughs> some other things that I'm believing God for, and I'm thanking him for those parts, yes. <laughs> Can ask for it and give 
Right. Ask that, not ask for the, the thing you can't see. If it's in the material realm already, I'm talking about things, physical, like the gallbladder. It's not in existence in the physical realm right now as far as I know. Right? Go ahead. I've, I've, so you ask for, since you know all things are yours, right. you can ask for whatever it is that you desire. Right. And then if he gives you a means of, of getting it, you have to know you're getting from God. Yeah, that's what we want. That's the idea. That's the idea. We're praising him, giving thanks to him. We're listening to him. We get to know his voice. How do you know a person's voice? You spend time with him. See, this is not... You guys keep me longer than I <laughs> intend to stay, but, but I don't want to hold you. We got some food in the back and stuff, but this is not magic. Okay. Now, I'm saying that. I'm not being funny. I'm making a, a very strong point here. Magic works. What? Magic works? God told Moses, go before Pharaoh, take and throw your walking stick down, And when he did, it turned into a serpent. Is that right? Why did it do that? Because God said it would. Is that right? Pharaoh's magicians came out and threw their sticks down. What happened? How'd they do that? His, his what threw their sticks down? His magicians. There are forces and things that are at work in this earth realm that if you read the Bible, I tell you, it will make science fiction absolutely pale if you read it and think about it. What turned those snakes, those sticks into snakes? They were real snakes. These were not men of God. These were men of the world. They were men of Egypt, of the king of Egypt. Just do it God's way. And God, to show us that his word is more powerful than any magic, he didn't say magic didn't exist. Those sticks were actually turned to snakes, and the snake that Moses' stick turned into devoured all the other snakes. But he wasn't snapping at the air, Those, his stick wasn't snapping, those were some snakes in that room. Magicians did that. So there are a lot of things that work that we don't come on church you guys don't have a slightest I well, some most of you I'd say venture to say most of you don't have a clue as to what happens when you take your remote control for your TV and do like that and the sound goes up or down or the TV goes off or on and someone can be standing between you and the TV What's going through that person? Or did it go around them? Or did it go over them? Or did it go under them? You don't have to understand how that worked. You read the thing that came with the TV, says take this cover off, put these two batteries in, point it at the thing on the, the TV or the remote control or whatever it, whatever it is. And we do it and it works. Huh? Don't ask, don't care, anyone, don't ask anyone, it works. Yes? We have a problem when it don't work. Hmm? We have a problem when it doesn't work. Yeah, when it doesn't work, now we really got a problem. Because we don't have a clue. Go get the book then and read it. Tell you all the wiring diagrams in it. You don't reject it. Now I'm going to go down there and get me a universal remote and buy me a new one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys getting the point of this? Praise God. Well, we're going to quit. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus.